Now, if I'm empowered by God, if the anointing of God is on me, no matter what comes my way, depression can't overtake me. You can't be spiritually powerful and depressed at the same time. You can't be spiritually strong and depressed at the same time. Uh, Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm. Now, if, now, Proverbs 24 and 10 says this, If we faint during times of adversity, our strength is small. So that means if my strength is small, then my joy is not where it should be. I'm not, I'm not allowing the joy of the Lord to flow through me. Joy is different from happiness. Happiness is, is based on our appearance. Happiness is based on my checkbook. When I look at my checkbook, it's full of money. Mm -hmm. Happiness is based on when I open my refrigerator, it's full of food. Mm -hmm. Happiness is based on everybody getting along with me. Mm -hmm. But what happens when those things are not in place? Well, we have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is based on knowledge of God. It's based on my relationship with God. But watch this. It produces the same effect that happiness does. Meaning that in the midst of my circumstance, I can laugh. I can be joy. I can be cheerful. Job, it's either 22 and 5 or 522, says that we're to laugh in the midst of that. When, 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 when life and, and, and trouble come, we're like, ha, ha, ha. Laugh at the devil. Yeah. Right. How can I do that? Because of the joy. joy. Because of my faith in Christ. Right. So no matter what I'm going through, the joy of the Lord flows through me. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't happen automatically. I have to do some things. What do I have to do? I have to get in the Word, read the Word, renew my mind with the Word, confess the Word out of my mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, a lot of times when the enemy starts attacking us, we just sit back and think. Yeah. But you got to you got to do just like Jesus. When he were when Jesus was attacked by the enemy, when the Bible says he was tempted in the wilderness by the enemy, he said it is written. He spoke the word of God to the devil. That's what you got to do. You got to speak to that devil. Let him know who you are. Take authority over that devil. Luke ten nineteen, Jesus said, Behold, I've given you power and authority over all the power of the enemy. We have authority over the devil. He's defeated, declawed, and defamed. He has no power over a believer. Amen? Amen. But you got to step into that power. You got to exercise that authority. That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen. All right. So what we're doing, we're, we're teaching on spiritual warfare. And the first thing that we're, the first teaching in this is uh, we're talking about resisting the enemy. All right? And in resisting the enemy, we're talking about the enemy's plan. Because if I know the enemy's plan, then I know how to prepare for him, for his attack. I know how to stand, uh, resist him when he comes. I know what to prepare for, okay? Mm -hmm. And what Jesus did, he exposed the enemy's plan to us. Yeah. And we just read it, John 10 and 10. He says, the enemy's plan is to kill, kill, and destroy. Listen, Satan is not your friend. Nope. <laughs> and, and I remember, remember the song, uh, to know this thing that there's no middle, middle place. You you either with the devil or you either with God. Right? So if I'm not submitted to God, even as a Christian, if I'm not submitted to God, then I'm allowing myself to be submitted to the enemy. That's right. All right? Now, watch this. His goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. So no matter how good it looks on the surface, his, the end result of surrendering to the enemy or giving it to him is that he's going to steal and kill and destroy my life. That's right. That's the end result. Mm -hmm. So when we decide to give into the world, now I'm going to really talk to you, when we decide to give into the world, mm -hmm. we're actually giving into the enemy. That's right. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, says that he's the God of this world. He's the, he's, the, he's the God of the morals and values of the world. How the world thinks. You know, they're, they're what, how the world believes. He's the God of that. Okay? So, if I live my life according to the direction of the world, who's behind that? 
if he's the God of the morals and values and beliefs, and I'm giving in to the beliefs of the world system, and I'm not giving in to God's system, then I'm giving in to Satan's system. So he's the, ultimately he's the one behind it. Even though you may not see it. There's a lot of times you walk in a store and you see workers, but you don't see the owner. You don't see who's behind the store. You just see the little worker thing. All right? Even though you don't see Satan behind the situation going on in the world, he is. So if I live my life according to his direction, or the world's direction, the end result will be to steal, kill, and destroy my life. Satan is not going to lead us to God. He's not going to push us to God. His, his ultimate goal is to pull us away from God. So if I'm living my life according to the world's direction, which a lot of Christians are, then that's why they're being deceived. It looks like you're winning at first, but then before you know it, he done draws he done, he done you out into the middle of nowhere and just abandon you. Amen? Amen. All right. So we said that if we know the enemy's plan, then we can prepare for him. Now we define a plan as a scheme or method of acting or doing developed in advance. Now you have to realize, Satan's plan that he has in action has been in, has been in place for thousands of years. So he's had ample, ample time to perfect it. He's good at what he does. You understand? He, he's so good, <laughs> he's so good, he deceived Adam and Eve in a perfect world. See, Adam and Eve didn't have no sin, they didn't have no sickness, they didn't have, they was living in a perfect world, and he deceived them in a perfect world, right? How much more are you and I in an imperfect world? That's right. If he did it to them in a perfect world, he can definitely do it to us in an imperfect world, right? Amen. But what we have to do, we have to equip ourselves. God has provided through His Word, through His Holy Spirit, through Christ, the power and the wisdom to overcome the enemy. That's right. But we got to put forth effort. It, it's not going to just happen. The, uh, your mind is not just going to be renewed with the Word of God supernaturally, which is what most people want. Yeah. That's why a lot of churches you go to, they don't even open the Bible. You know, they just want. I kind of won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about a whole lot of stuff except the word. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't they don't teach the word. That's why my brothers and sisters in Christ are being defeated out there. That's why they walk in depressed because they're not teaching the word of God. This is where we get it from. This is where we learn how to operate what we have. Mm -hmm. If somebody <laughs> brought you a Duke is relating this to who's the computer with it. If somebody brought you a 2012 computer and they say this computer does it all. Yeah. You can talk to anybody anywhere. It just do everything, right? And they bring you the computer and bring you the manual. Mm -hmm. If you never read that manual on how to operate the computer, it does you no know, good. It's sitting right there, all that power yeah. sitting in front of you, mm -hmm. but it's not benefiting you because you haven't taken the time to read the manual on how to operate it. Right. You understand? And then <laughs> reading it ain't enough. Right. So, even though Duke may have read instructions about the computer, eventually he had to get on the computer and do it. That's right. See, a lot of times, understanding comes with doing. Yeah. Amen? Amen? All right. So, we've been, I have been down in 10 minutes. We've been, <laughs> we've been talking about uh, tactics of the enemy that he uses to try to carry out his goal of destruction, okay? And the first tactic that we talked about was that the enemy takes the seed of the word of God from those who don't understand it. When you're in a church service and you don't understand what's being said, the enemy through the pressure of circumstances can take that word from you. That's in Matthew 13 and 19. He can take that word from you. That's why we encourage people. If you don't understand what the preacher has said, that's why it's good to bring paper to write it down. What you don't understand in that end of the service, I come to explain to you. Never leave a service where you don't understand. So the enemy will take that from you. I like to use the, the, the traffic light. Most of us drive. When we pull up to a traffic light and it's red, that means to stop, right? The only person that can make you go is a police officer if he's out there directing traffic. Nobody sitting in the car, man, go. 
go. Man, you know, red means no. We know red means stop and green means go. We have that understanding. We need that same type of understanding of the word. So when people try to get us to do things that's not in the word or that's contrary to the word, we say no. Right. Say no. But a lot of people are fooled and they're moving from church to church, doctrine to doctrine, because they don't have an understanding of the word. Mm -hmm. And then they get mad with God when things happen. Bad things. And I have a problem with that because Jesus said the devil comes and do the bad things. And you have to realize God and the devil do not work side by side. They're not working together. They're always in opposition. If the devil doing one thing, then Jesus is doing the opposite. Okay? And if we say that Jesus or God is doing the bad things, that means that the devil has to be doing what? The good things. Because he ain't going to work with them. So that can't be true. But we know the devil is not doing the good things. God is the one doing the good things. But we blame God. That's, and the reason why we blame God is because we don't know. We, don't, we haven't taken the time to develop a relationship with him. You have people in your life that you develop a relationship with. And you know their character. Can't no one come up to you and tell you that they did something. And you say, well, and you, the first thing you say, no, I know they didn't do that because that's not their character. I know them. Right. But we need to get that same kind of relationship with God. Well, I know God. God, God didn't put sickness on you to get you a 